welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are discussing the other side of the coin. Not the other side of the coin of the WWE figures. If you missed our video yesterday, guys, definitely go check it out. We covered the biggest issues with WWE action figures. You know, only Elites and Ultimates. We didn't get into the basics. Uh, that wasn't a cough, Bradley. I feel like my voice is actually a lot better today than the last couple days. That was talking about the basics. You know what I'm talking about. Look at you. This guy knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, you know. But today, guys, we're going to go over to the other company, the rival company, the other side, the AEW figures, the beloved unrivaled collection from Jazzwares and AEW. While we love this line, while they're very sought after, while we love all the characters we're getting and all those things, we do have some problems with them, man. And I think anybody will tell you if they own these, they will tell you they have some issues. They're definitely not without fault. However, they do have a ton of great qualities about them, which I will slightly mention in this video. Again, Again, it's not about the positives today, but the positives heavily outweigh the negatives, much like the WWE figures, man. I love these figures. They're a ton of fun to collect. They're a ton of fun to pose around, and let's just shut the hell up and dive into these issues, shall we? So let's start off with the number one. The number one for me, guys, is going to be the scale. I think a lot of people are going to agree with this one, okay? Uh, our biggest examples of scale, I think, are going to be Dustin's tall AF self right here. We also have Moxley. Now, this Moxley is not the same scale as it was. You guys remember we did surgery on this. I do have a couple more of these, but I don't have them loose. I have them mocked. So uh, we have Dustin, we have Moxley, and I think some others would include Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy is definitely too tall. And I think there's one or two more. I would say maybe maybe Rio is a little bit too tall. I think she's supposed to be like 5'1 or something, but she's definitely not 5'1. She is shorter for sure, but she's definitely not 5'1 scale. Let's just go ahead and get into this right quick so you guys can see Dustin towering over right here. If we compare him to Cody over here, who is his brother, they definitely are not this much in height difference, man. This is just definitely not realistic. If you look at them side by side, this is just not how it goes. Also, if you compare Cody to Matt Hardy, which is another big one, Matt Hardy is definitely does, does not tower over Cody like this. I even have an image that I can show you guys of the two standing right beside each other, and this just so, it simply is not the case. Now, I don't know why the scale is off on some of these. I don't know if they're trying to master it or whatever the case is. When you do fix the height, they do look a lot better like this Moxley. I definitely shortened him up and it's not perfect, but it definitely looks a lot better than it did. And I will take that, man. I will definitely take that. But yeah, the scale is one thing that I do not like. I feel like they could definitely improve in the scale. Now again, it's not all the figures. I feel like some of them do scale well. The Bucks, Kenny, Cody, Orange Cassidy, Pa, I think even Pentagon back there, MJF, Chris Jericho. I think a lot of them do scale, but I think when you get into those slightly taller characters is where it kind of gets iffy and it's like, oh, uh, I think you kind of bit off more than you could chew on this aspect of their height, but again, not a huge issue. I mean, it can be a huge issue, but I think at this point, we've kind of controlled it. Hopefully, it will change moving forward. We'll just have to see how that goes, but there is the scale issue. That is the first issue that I wanted to address. Now, let's get into our second issue, Brad, and that is going to be, I, I don't know really what this is, man, but I don't know if you guys have noticed this. Let me go ahead and zoom in, all right? So, on these AEW figures, man, this is something that really bothers me about them. It's like the lower forearm is like super duper like, I don't know what you'd call it. Would it be the, would the word be flimsy? They're just kind of flimsy, you know? You kind of flick it right here, and it kind of like shakes back and forth right there. I don't think that should be happening. Now, I don't think all of them are like that. Now, I don't know if it's maybe the plastic that the elbow joint is made out of is so flimsy that, uh, you know, it doesn't stick when you do this. Another thing that I've noticed, now, th not all of them do this, but some figures, when you try to like, say I wanted to have this guy talking on the phone, I put a phone in his hand. I don't think Matt Hardy does it, but like, if you stick it up to his ear, sometimes like, it won't hold in place. Like, it'll kind of be out here, and you'll try to push it and it'll go back out here. I don't, I'm trying to figure out if I can find like an example of it exactly. Let me see if I can get a, a good example of it. I can't do it. Uh, the other day my Kenny Omega was doing it filming Vindication. It did this. It was like this hand right here. I tried to like stick it up here and it kept like flailing out. It's not doing it right now though but I don't know. Let me know if you guys have seen that in the past or if you've experienced that with your AEW figures but right here Pentagon is another great example of this. Just look how like I'm barely grazing that. I'm barely grazing this and it's like flaring out right there. So like that right there it's again it doesn't really affect the figure too much but it's just like it makes me feel like i'm gonna snap something if that makes sense so maybe it's just because they've made this elbow joint a little bit flexible and that's why because that's why you can you know you can do that right there i don't think it's the the forearm i think it's the elbow joint that makes that do that so i don't know that's just something that i wanted to point out right there another tiny issue now i don't think all the figures have it but sometimes the coloration between the lower torso and the upper torso can get a bit a little bit like out of whack like it won't exactly 
actually line up. Now, I think that could be because they actually, I know, I know why that is. It's because this is made of a certain material and this is made of a different material. When you have those two different materials like that, it comes across as two different colors. Now, I don't think you can really see it all that well in person, but I think when you put it on camera is more about when you can see it. Now, I know Santana had a large problem with that, but I know a lot of people have mentioned that before, so I know that is one that a lot of people will probably mention. Another one that I wanted to mention, guys, is going to be the just the looseness over time. A lot of people that pick fed and a lot of people that do stop motion and stuff with these figures have told me once they do like one or two matches with them, they're completely like, they get really loosey-goosey legs. Now, I haven't pick fedded like full matches, you know, like super long pay-per-view matches with these guys. I've only done minutes, like, you know, I've posed them around the backstage. I've done a couple matches that you guys will see on Vindication, things of that nature, but I haven't done anything like substantial, very long pay-per-view, you know, a 20-minute match or a 10-minute match on a show where I've had to, you know, pose these guys around, get them to hold positions for a while. But I've heard from multiple pick fetters. I know Gene Addy has told me, my boy Gene Addy has told me that it's gotten loose. My boy Steinsenberg Customs has told me that his legs have gotten loose. And so I think that is one issue that uh, I haven't necessarily experienced, but I have posed around a couple. And I've had some that get loose legs for no reason, and it's because they're all on ball joints. So it's something that we discuss in our WWE figure segment from yesterday is that they're all on ball joints, which is excellent. But because you do ball joints, you run the risk of uh, having loose legs, which you can fix. There are little things you can do. There's a, a bunch of different materials you can like. You, you could remove the legs and then put that material onto the ball joint and it'll tighten it up. There's multiple things you could do for that, but it's just annoying to have to do that. So I don't really know what the solve is. I don't know if there is a fix for that, but it is something that I'd like to mention here. And I think one of the last things that I want to get into, guys, is head sculpts. Now, I think for the most part, these head sculpts have been phenomenal. Like, of course, we've had a couple duds. I think Riho is one that I think a lot of people aren't really a fan of. You know, her Chase variant head sculpt is a lot better. I think that, you know, this Matt Jackson over here has seen better days. I know it's a head swap from the Series 3, but I think the likeness is there. It's just like those deep, like, eye shadows or whatever you would call that. Like the, what are they called? Like the bags under the eyes are really highlighted and and that's like something that I think really throws it off. Like we've seen great head sculpts. I think this Kenny Omega Series 4 looks great. The Kenny, uh, the Cody the Cody Rhodes smiling head sculpt looks phenomenal. I think the Moxley is good. I think the MJF is really good. This Matt Hardy is even good, even if it is a little bit oversized. And uh, Orange Cassidy is another one, man. Just like look at these eye bags. Like I don't know. I just feel like it would look a lot better if it didn't have that. Like if that was smoothed out right there, it would just make it give it a lot more likeness. And again, the head sculpts aren't bad by any means, but I think they could be improved upon. Also, like, eye prints. I don't think we've had bi bad eye prints since, like, Series 1. I think Series 1 kind of kicked that. You know, the skin tone issue, we kind of kicked that in Series 1. You know, moving forward, we're not going to have a problem with that. Still waiting on the Series 1 to get re-released. I think that's going to be excellent. And then, you guys know that Pac had a terrible head sculpt. I don't even have mine on the figure because I uh, I wanted to put the Elite 55 Neville head sculpt on there, and it looks pretty damn good. Also, um, Riho and Pac don't have lower boot rotation. I'm not sure if that's going to be an ongoing thing. Hopefully, they never bring that back. That's going to be a, an ongoing joke with Pac because any figure that ends up having boot rotation or doesn't, Pac will be mentioned. So that's just a that's just a little thing right there. But overall, man, these figures are super nice. I freaking love them. I think they're great. I think that just maybe the joint plastic, like whatever they use for knee joints and whatever they use for elbow joints, I think that plastic maybe needs to be upgraded because that's why my, you guys remember my Blood Brothers Dustin in the review, the leg snapped completely at the joint, like where it bends. So I think that is probably another issue you right there but overall man these figures are fantastic i love collecting them they're super fun they've really brought a lot of fun back to collecting you know like like having these new lines to seek out and stuff because i feel like wwe figures for the most part some are definitely hard to find but i feel like you can pretty much find you can find a lot of them in a lot of places but so far with the aew figures man i'm just in love with the line like that's why i mean i have a full mock collection that i'm working on i have my loose collection and customs and stuff and pick fetting with these guys we've had these guys in the pick fet for so long and finally having official figures of them after so long in the Fed. I mean, it's just super exciting, super fun, and uh, I hate to bring up issues with figures, man. I didn't even like making the video yesterday, but I figured that a lot of people could relate to it, and you guys would get a kick out of it, and you guys could relate to that and tell me what you guys think. But before we get out of here, guys, let's get into our random shout-out. I think that's all the issues I can find. If I have any more, I will try to mention them down in the comment section. And this shout-out is going to go to Gonzalez, who says, this man is sick. Brad, cross the line. Get him some cough drops now. So a huge shout-out to Gonzalez as for that comment. I feel um, a lot better. I, I, my energy is still a little bit low, but as far as like like my cough or like my voice being a little bit deep, I'm pretty good. I think I'm, I'm alright. But I appreciate all the concern. A lot of people reached 
out, and I really appreciated that, man. Thank you so much to everybody that checked on me yesterday and everything like that. You guys are the absolute best. But if you guys have any other problems with your AEW figures, man, let me know down in the comment section below. I would love to get some feedback on what you guys think and everything. But hopefully Vindication will be soon up, and you guys will enjoy the shit out of it, and then we'll be on our way, man. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel, and don't be like this Pac and not have leg rotation, because you know what that means, Brad. That means that Pac, you, sir... You cross the line, I've been...